are gradually losing the game. The people at Princeton discovered that if you make the RAM really cold, bits disappear faster. Usually a RAM erases within seconds or under minutes if it's, if it's lucky. Uh, if you freeze it like this, this is using an aerosol can turned upside down. You just spray it and get up to negative 50 degrees Celsius. You freeze that piece of RAM, the information can stay on there for up to 10, maybe 15 minutes. Using this data, uh, if you leave your computer on and somebody steals it, they can power it off, freeze your RAM, take it out. They, they could even take it out of the computer and put it into a different one without disrupting any of that data. And you're like, well, what does this have to do with it? Well, uh, with these full disk encryption methods, when you log in, your encryption key is stored to RAM. So if someone can steal your computer and have access to your RAM, then they can have your encryption key. And with that, they have full access to all your data, your disk, no password, no nothing. So if you're keeping any sensitive data on your computer, uh, I don't recommend it <laughs> that much. Uh, it is a lengthy process, and you need to be pretty specific, uh, sophisticated with computers. But it's pretty amazing that someone can think of something like this and that they can have full access to anything without uh, any really, really sophisticated stuff. <coughs> My recommendations, encrypt any and all data that you would not want someone else looking at. That could be anything. I mean, there's the obvious things like for some odd reason you're keeping your social security numbers or credit cards or something like that. Encrypt that stuff with the highest bit encryption you can think of. Or even five, 256. I even saw an encryption program that went to 488, which is two to the 488 power number of combinations, which is just mind blowing. But um, yes, encrypt everything you, you don't want anybody to look at. Uh, all web servers, such as banking and things, that use the secure transfer protocol use at least 128 bit encryption. This seems to be the new growing standard. However, uh, some systems still use 40 or less. Um, so it needs to be kicked up a notch here. It's 120, Um Another thing, another note on the encryption of the secure transfer protocol. If you have a really, really old web browser, it will not support this high of encryption. Like if your grandma still has using Windows 95 with Internet Explorer like 5, they, they're still using like 16-bit encryption, which can be cracked in a matter of seconds or minutes. So I want to inform some people that might not be uh, technologically advanced, per se. Uh, another recommendation I recommend is that the exportation loss of encryption software uh, could be enforced a little better. Uh, like I said before, you have to submit to the Bureau of, of Security if you're going to release open source software. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't go through the approval process and they're exporting encryption software and such to countries that we might not want them to have. For multiple reasons. First off, it could be illegal in that country, so you're already committing a crime. And uh, it, it can get ugly. So, um, those are my recommendations. Here's my sources. And thank you all for listening. I hope it didn't bore you. Uh, yep, that's encryption.